Hey, welcome back all. Well, today I'm gonna see if I can pull the rear fuel tank on this F-150. This is 1987. I wanna start by loosening the fuel line hose up to the tank. So what I wanna do is get this filler hose loose from the tank. Take the tank out, clean it, and put a new fuel pump in it. I've uh, put some lubricating oil on these bolts here on each side and at the back here and there and uh, I've also put some lubricating oil on these, these seat clamps that are holding there's another one up under there there they are okay okay these are seven millimeter bolts I'm using a little quarter inch ratchet wrench And they're more like screws than bolts. Okay, the screws are loose. I believe this is a piece from an old cap. And this here's a piece from the old original filler cap, I'm sure. Long since gone. But this is loose now. A little wiggle room for the hose. These two clamps here can either be loosened with the Eight millimeter socket, a five sixteenth socket, or a screwdriver. I'm going to take this one loose from the body and this one loose for the hose part. I took a screwdriver and I pushed it in there around the side of the hose and then I squirted a little lubricating oil on the side as well. you can see that it's fairly loose in there. Okay, now I'm going to work on uh, this bolt right up here. All right, this bolt just wants to spin, so this, I'm holding the top with the 13 millimeter, and this one here is a 15 millimeter, and I'm going to use a half inch drive ratchet. Give me a little more leverage on it to break it loose. The top wrench holds itself against the frame once you get started. And there's what you're looking at for bolts that hold the strap. Working on the second bolt. I have a vacuum line here. I mean, excuse me, a vent, vent line. And I do want to get that out of the way a little bit. I'm trying to keep it out of the way, and it just still wants to get in the way. Okay. Okay, you can see how this wrench sort of fits on the back side, top of the bolt. Okay. The reason I moved the vacuum line is I knew the wrench would come around and pull against it, and I got to make sure there's no other lines up here that's going to hit. Okay, it's okay. As soon as it reaches a happy spot, it'll uh, sit there and hold. This one's holding pretty well. This strap would probably come right on down. So I'm not going to fool with this one too much. My goal is to loosen this up enough to where I can drop, drop the tank down a little bit because these fuel lines that are coming from the front go up over this frame right here and into the tank. And you can't get to them with the tank pushed up against the bed. Okay, here we go. It's probably going to hit the exhaust pipe. Let's see how it's going to happen. The pipe's going to move. There we go. Yeah, you're hearing it. It's on tight. They are on tight. Okay, that one's loose. So far, I believe it is dropping down some because I've got this much gap here. Okay, now I'm going to move to the last bolt, and it's towards the rear of this strap here.
two lines coming along the frame, and then they go into the tank, up in here and back in here, on the top of the tank. So that's the problem. Okay, I've loosened my fuel lines from the frame. There was just a little clip back up in here that needed to be pushed or pulled one way or another. One from the bottom one and one for the top. Each line went in each side of the clip. But anyway, I have some slop here. A little leeway or maybe I can lower the tank enough to uh, pull these lines up over the frame some and disconnect them from the tank. Okay, I have my jack in position supporting the tank and now I'm going to remove the bolts that I loosened previously and take these uh, straps loose. I have the straps loose now and this tank is definitely empty. But I got a little problem here. The receiver hitch, keeping it from dropping down on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and take this receiver hitch off. Okay, I've got the receiver hitch unbolted and off the truck and both straps loose from the gas tank. I'm going to see if I can get the filler neck loose now. I've repositioned the braces under the tank since it's loose. And I've slid the tank over towards the passenger side as far as it will go. Okay, since the tank is positioned all the way over towards the passenger side and is resting on the frame, I may be able to get this filler neck out of the uh, hose in there and possibly loose from the body here. So I've got it free, but there's extra parts attached to it. As you can see, we have a another hose inside of a hose. see if I can remove this exhaust from the hanger, this pipe from the hanger. I've used a clamp to pull my exhaust out of the way, but I feel like the clamp's going to get in my way. But what it has done, it has exposed the shaft up here of the uh, hanger to where I can get some lubrication in it fairly easy. I'm going, to play, I'm going to spray some lubricating oil up in there. With my clamp positioned on this rubber grommet and pulling it tight, weasel this around up here and get it over that little ridge. And now I'm pushing on it and I'm able to pull the exhaust push the exhaust away from the grommet a little bit. And I got some pliers here. There we go. Okay. It is free of the grommet. The fuel lines seem to be holding the tank. They're stretched at their wit's end right now. But I was able to get the clip off the one on the, the right side. 
And now I'm going to try and take the clip off the other one. If I can break those loose, I have enough slop in the uh, electrical connection, which is between them, that maybe I can pull them loose and this tank will be under less of a bind. I was able to reach up under this way with my left arm. Now that I've got the tank down a little bit and it seems to be stuck on the exhaust pipe otherwise it would come down further so if you can remove your exhaust it might be beneficial. I was able to get the clips off of the tank fuel lines and they look like this. I got lucky and had these instead of the the metal ones like on the fuel rail up near the engine. Okay I'm going to see if I can pull this exhaust pipe towards the camera and get this flange of the gas tank behind it. I was able to get both fuel lines off with the clips as you saw. But anyway if I can get this pulled over and maybe pull the tank down a little more. I've got some leeway with the uh, electrical connection so the tank can come down some if I can get it off of this pipe. <laughs> there we go. That's a little better. Well, perhaps you saw the tank lowering some as I lowered the jack. Now that I'm past the exhaust pipe, I'm able to get to the electrical connection now. Um, just to recap, it, I took these two fuel lines loose while the tank was still up there because they were pretty short and they were keeping tension, not allowing the tank to come down. This vacuum line goes over the top of the cross member there and attaches to a metal tube that probably goes to the smog. Okay, the electrical connection is free. I just stuck a flat blade screwdriver right under here and then pry it up. Okay, well, I believe this tank is loose. I'm going to take it on out. Alright, now that tank is free, I'm going to take it out of the truck. I'm going to remove the fuel pump, the old one. I'm going to clean the tank. I'm going to put the new fuel pump back in. Okay, there she is, and just for fun, that says 06, 01, 90 Ford. So, this is an 87. Looks like three years later that got replaced. So I'm going to use a, a brass punch or a brass rod to try and loosen this after I lubricate it. And there was probably maybe half a gallon of gas left in this, but you wouldn't call it gas. It was more like varnish. Okay, there'd probably be some wind noise here. She's frozen on there, folks. Okay, screwdriver time. Remember, try not to make any sparks.
I don't know if you can see that hose is all split, so even if the fuel pump was working, it could be an exercise in futility. Oops, there went the... We weren't going to save that anyway, were we? There's nothing about this we're going to save. We're just going to look at it and see what a mess this is. Okay. Now we got to save it to compare it to the other one. I want to take a look down inside. I put some laundry detergent in here to make it linen fresh and some water. I've sloshed it around a bunch. Parsley covers the opening there, kind of cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to siphon out the water and the soap and then I'm going to fill it with some water, not fill it, but put some water in, slosh it around, siphon that out until I'm satisfied I got most of the soap out. Then I have some tank, special tank cleaner to put in it. Yeah, my siphon hose works pretty good for this job. Okay, I run my laundry soap through here and cleaned it out really well. It did a wonderful job. So. I'm going to uh, use some tank cleaner next, following the instructions on the box. Okay, I've marked the uh, pumps. Marked the new pump, like the old pump right here, here, and here, so I can get it in the uh, most likely the correct spot. Put a little oil in here and the ceiling ring. I'm going to go ahead and put this pump in. Okay, this ring just hammers back on, or actually slides back on. And when you see it hit tab like this one right here in front of the punch, right there, there's one there, there's another tab up here, it hits. There's actually their stops is what they are. I believe there's one over here as well. Anyway, there's stops and the ring will stop and it's on there. It's just pretty much the reverse of uh, taking it off. Okay, now what I want to do is, uh, I probably should have done this when it was out, but I want to see if I get a resistance reading. All right, now I want to see if I can get a resistance reading on the uh, Sending unit, this would be the ground, this would be the hot wire going to the sending unit. And I do, so, sending unit, uh, actually the float, you want to call it, is working. Okay, now I want to test the pump. This is the uh, negative to the side of the pump. This would be the positive feed line, this little motorcycle battery so the pump is working oh and the old pump well as you can see it's a mess and there's a there's no resistance reading there at all and I tested the motor and it did not run either this tank is ready to be put back in okay this tank was really a bear and if you have a clamp, such as this one, which is reversible, you can also use it as a pusher. This will really, really help you grab the lips or whatever of the tank and give yourself a hand with the jack. It also helps me in removing my exhaust pipe or pulling it lower. Okay, there is one other thing I would have done different in removing it. Let me show you back here. These fuel lines that go over the frame right here, when you drop the tank down at, at an angle, you can see them a whole bunch better back here. Now you still might have to reach in from the front, push them loose, but I was able to actually put them on from the back here and their clips too. And by the way, the clips I got with my pump were kind of old and they I broke two of them. Let me see if I can hear the fuel pump running. Uh, 
Okay, the next thing I want to do is put this filler neck in. And I'm going to have to take the cap off, unfortunately. Put a rag in there instead. And, well, I don't know where the term elbow grease comes from, but I can tell you what. I definitely am using some of it. Okay, the filler pipe is in. Just got to tighten the last of the screws up. Put this piece back on. Not really sure what it came from. Maybe it's a spacer. I don't know. And put the gas cap back on. The uh, clamp for the body and the clamp for the hose filler spout are both secure now. Time to go tighten the fuel tank down. I believe I said I'd give you a few reasons why I didn't pull the bed. This is one. Uh, the bed and the bumper seem to be attached here. <laughs> I did not do it. It came this way. But that's one reason. Another reason I didn't want to pull the bed is because I would have to remove the tires and I would have to jack the truck up and set it on stands. And I don't like that too much working under it on the whole rear end up on stands. So, and I'm in the dirt as well, so that's not good. Another reason I didn't want to pull the bed is I'd have to pull the bed liner. And it's one piece. I mean, it probably wouldn't be that hard, but it's that extra work. And then another reason, tail lights, marker lights, lights, license plate lights. I'd have to take those loose as well. And it just seemed like extra work to me. And probably another reason is that once I get this whole bed off. I still have to drop the fuel tank because I wanted to clean the tank out. It's been sitting too long. So there was a whole bunch of extra work. Granted, this tank is a bear. It is a lot of work and it would be easier to get to with the bed off, of course, but you still have to take the tank loose. And I did not want to go through the extra work. I'm by myself and I would probably need another guy to help me with the bed anyway. So those are my reasons. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to tighten all these bolts and secure the tank to the frame. Then I'm going to go back and uh, put the receiver hitch on. These are the bolts I left hanging for the receiver hitch. And I had one wire I had to cut to the uh, trailer hitch. So one other thing I want to point out before I go. I am going to put a dab of thread locker on these uh, all these bolts. I believe I saw a bit of orange thread locker, just a dab, when I looked at the bolts when I was cleaning them. That's it for this video. And until the next video, this is Cars, Trucks, and Detours, aka Steve AZ711, and thanking you all for watching, putting up with me and subscribing. I do appreciate it. Hope all your repairs go well and bye for now.